pulpit and able not to wear the mask. Thank you, Alfred, for reading scripture. And uh, it's amazing that last Sunday and this Sunday, we heard some testimonies in the morning in, in, the, in the Maltese version service, that is. And uh, it comes along very well because this chapter in First Thessalonians is addressing afflictions that Christians go through in their Christian life. And today I, I felt that not going into biblical details, but using scripture so that it will direct a message into our hearts because it, because it is so important to know that we shouldn't be afraid of afflictions. Afflictions will come, as Paul said to the Thessalonians, and they are there for a very good reason. And when I was preparing, um, looking at the scripture and making some research and praying on scripture, there are three verses that, that stood out. I am using them as key verses in, in my sermon, and permit me to read them again. It's important for me to put you in the right context from where we're going to depart. And uh, it's verse 3 till verse 5. I am going to read again for your, for your benefit. We sent him to strengthen, strengthen you, that is Timothy, to encourage you in your faith so that no one be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted, and it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and that our labor might have been in vain. Amazing part of the, of the chapter. Okay. I prefer to use the laptop because, you know, I mean, the tablet is so small for me and for me to see my notes you know it's not the age I'm talking about I'm not talking about age but I'm talking about sight okay we live we don't live by sight by faith but in this case I need my sight okay so Paul is telling us here that suffering is not unexpected in the church in our Christian walk in fact, it's predicted. And Paul is telling, again, the, the Thessalonians that when I was with you then, I told you about this, that we will be persecuted, and you've seen it now, and you know very well. It is your experience. And it is also our experience, brethren, that we will have trials, afflictions in our Christian life, and this is part of God's plan for us to become disciples. Amen? And I'm sure that after today, after this sermon, you will know this a bit better because it will help us. I mean, if we end up moaning 
after every affliction or trial that we go through, you know, it wouldn't be such a happy church, would it? Huh? So we have to be focused that when God is permitting, as Paul is telling the Thessalonians, afflictions and trials and persecutions in their lives. And the Thessalonians were praised for them to, to stand and to overcome these afflictions. Why did they do that? Because they were strong people? No. Because they focused on God. They believed in him. That he will deliver them. And whenever we go and we pass an affliction or a trial, we become stronger Christians. And that is the intention of God here. That is his intention. So for us to sort of save ourselves from the extra energy that we, that we sort of use in complaining, moaning about trials. Instead, God here is telling us, focus on me. Believe in me, and I will lead you in the right path. Whatever the circumstances will be. And from, from this chapter, I can see that the Thessalonians were, as we saw in the first two chapters, were persecuted by their countrymen. They were heavily persecuted, as we are persecuted, because the only reason that they are persecuted, because we belong to Jesus. That is the reason. That is the reason. And people are persecuting us because of this reason, without them knowing it seems, it's like it goes automatic, you know? If you are a person who believes in the Bible, if you are a person who believes that whoever wrote the Bible wrote the actual inspired word of God, you're crazy. And you do not deserve to be part of the society, it seems. That's where it's leading to. This is the persecution that we are suffering right now. But this persecution will not weaken the church, it will strengthen it. Because that is what the experience of scripture, um, God is letting us know. And Paul here, believe it or not, he is practically repeating what Jesus had, had told us in the gospel. I had, I had the scripture somewhere here. The, the problem is this, that I will have to, I, I have to do notes for the English and notes for the Maltese. And believe me, I have, I, have to, I have to confess this. I am more of the Maltese part, you know? So it's like I do notes in the Maltese, which I do not do in the English. Hmm. But I, I know this by heart anyway. But John 16, 33, um, Jesus is telling us here, I have t I'm, I'm going to paraphrase, I have told you all this to give you hope. You will have to suffer. Jesus said that we will have to suffer, but make heart, I overcame the world. This is our hope. That's why it is worthwhile to receive these afflictions and believe that God is using these afflictions to build us up because we have hope that this is going to result in something much, much greater than this temporary suffering. Afflictions and suffering, brethren, are 
unavoidable, an unavoidable part of our life uh, as believers, especially when we are living in this fallen world. Now today, I, as I said this morning, I come to this assembly and I see you all dressed up well, all looking well, even though you have the mask on, but I can see that expression. I'm not giving you permission to remove the mask. But if it's your personal decision, go ahead. <laughs> so, you all look great. But what if we had to search in our hearts and say, what, what are my afflictions? What are the trials I am passing through? Or else, better, what are the trials that God is permitting in my life I am going through? And maybe, with your permission, I can, I can list some, some situations that you might be affected with. Maybe relationship difficulties, health problems, discouraging family dynamics, work pressures, financial hardships, uncertainty about the future, loneliness, guilt, grief, disappointment by others, etc., etc. It goes on and on. So if maybe this is w one of these in the list is your situation, great or small, God is calling us to trust him amidst of these afflictions. He is calling us to trust him because he is in control. And the moment that we keep our, fi our eyes fixed on him, we can stand on the storm. The storm will not swallow us. But we have to keep trusting God. He doesn't want us to lose sight of him in the storm. He wants us to believe in him that he will take care of you. He will take care of us. This is an assurance that is coming from scripture. It is an assurance that God has written for us that it might give us strength to go on and on, day after day. Fix your eyes on Jesus, and you wouldn't know that you are stepping on the storm. There might be difficult trials. There might be less difficult trials. But whatever the trial, take it to heart. And in your prayer, ask God to guide you, to give you the benefit of these trials and to deliver you from them. Because he is our deliverer. He will not let us decay in the storm. He will not let us be. He will use that for the benefit of our Christian character that we may become stronger and stronger after every affliction. During the affliction, during the trial, and I can witness to that, it's not easy to fix your eyes on Jesus. I, I mean, I know if this is going through your mind, I agree with you. It's not easy. It's not easy. But it's possible. It's possible. That's why we have each other. Because if I cannot make it alone, I will come to you that you might help me keep standing in these afflictions, in these difficulties, persecution, something that happens at home, something that happens in you personally, a, a particular temptation. We have each other. 
So if God is at work in your life, he is teaching us an inevitable lesson through these trials and afflictions. As Paul saw in the Thessalonian church, he was delighted, not because of the trials, he was delighted because of the victories in the trials. That's why Paul was delighted. We will see later that Paul expresses this feeling to, this, to the church that because of these victories that made his day, made his life probably, not his day. So the lesson is that believers, the lesson that God will be teaching us is that us believers respond to afflictions with faith, not with moaning or protests or complaining, but we respond to afflictions with faith. And if need be, ask help in the church. That makes us whole. That makes us complete. That's why we are called a body. And this is what the Thessalonians did. This is what P Paul, sorry, Peter keeps coming to my mind. I don't know this character, Peter. I like Peter, and I <laughs> there's a lot of similarities between me and Peter. <laughs> you know, uh, like to be mischievous, Peter. I am that type also, but I don't know, Peter. Uh, probably we will be spending a lot of time in eternity together. Yeah, I believe so. This is what the Thessalonians did, and that is what Paul praised the church for because they responded to afflictions with faith in Jesus Christ and that is what kept them standing that is what kept them whole focusing keeping their eyes focused on Jesus and how do I keep my eyes focused on Jesus through scripture through prayer, through my personal relationship with him, through me confessing what I am going through with him. And there, the storm will not affect us that, that much. I was going through this research and I came across this particular tree I would like to, to share with you. Uh, uh, I think I forgot to uh, I forgot to do to start my timer. Sorry. I did not do on pur that on purpose, all right? Um 11:30. Am I done here? <laughs> no, no, I'm not done. No, I'm not done. I'm not done. It's 2 o'clock, Pastor Joe told me. Okay, no, no, I, I, I do not intend to, to make you feel bored. I want you to make you feel the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the reason. It's not the time that we need, but the power of the Holy Spirit. This particular tree, soon coming to an end, this particular tree is called the bristle cone pine. It is a tree. It is actually the oldest tree on earth. It is estimated to be as much as 4,800 years old. Wow, I said. And I looked at, at this, you know, this fact. And it's, it was good to bring this, these characteristics of these three to, to, to make another point here. Or continue to make the point. So these trees that we have today, they, they've seen the pyramids being built. That's how old they are. And this morning when I, s I mentioned the word pyramid, I had to share with the church um, what happened yesterday with Reuben. I thought he was an Egyptian. And, uh, and Pastor Joe said, okay, now the Egyptian is here and he's going to close in prayer. And I... I went into it. 
I said, this Egyptian I would like to get to know. And the Egyptian, Ruben, told, told us, would you like me to re, um, close in Maltese or in Egyptian? And Pastor Joe told him, no, no, in Maltese, in Maltese, it's okay. And he started praying in Maltese. I said, wow, his Maltese is really good. <laughs> this guy, his Maltese. And, uh, and, and when he stopped, I started to talk with him. <laughs> and I told him, we, my wife and I came to the honeymoon in Egypt. And I don't know how, Ru but Ruben heard me this morning. He was online. And, uh, and then my wife told me, Ed, that's Ruben of the church. I said, Mama Mia. And I thanked God that all the people who persecute me in the church <laughs> had already left the page. But I had to, you know, I had uh, just, just Simone and I threatened her. She said, I'm still here. I said, tomorrow I have the pulpit, you just, just for you to know. But I had to confess this, this thing. I mean, it, 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 it really got me. It got me on one foot and so on. Um, so these trees, they go as far as the pyramids. And they grow on mountaintops as high as 11,000 feet. And they can withstand Arctic temperatures, fierce winds, thin air, and a little rainfall. And these characteristics of this tree, sort of they were taught by Paul in Romans chapter 5, verse between verse 3 and 4, and I will just paraphrase. And he says, tribulation produces character. Paul is saying that tribulation, afflictions, produce character. And this, this tree, the hardship of this tree, has produced extraordinary strength and staying power, the, the encyclopedia says. And, and, and these words, they can, be, they, ca they can be used for the church. So these tribulations, they produce extraordinary spiritual strength when we, s when we stand by faith and staying power, the will to remain in Christ. And this tree marveled me, just to let alone the part of Reuben, but anyway. Um, so, brethren, adversity is part of the process that God uses to produce good results in our lives. So, let us not be afraid of the potter's hands. Let us not be afraid when God hurts us a bit, it hurts. It hurts to be transformed. It hurts to become from Edwin to looking like Jesus. It hurts to become from Simon and Jesus alike. There is a lot of pain for us. There is a lot of sacrifice, as Masha said for us, but it's worthwhile. It is worthwhile because the prize is far beyond our imagination. So, if we accept aff if affliction with humility, <laughs> this can be instructive and the discipline that leads us to a deeper, fuller life. And the King David says this in his psalm. Amazingly, how scripture works. And in Psalm 119, verse 67, David writes this. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your word. And but now means... But now that you are afflicting me, but now that I know that you are forming my character through these afflictions, now I keep your word. Why? Why? Because afflictions then, they start to make sense. Okay? And you know that God will turn to good all situations to those for those who love him. This is scripture. 
it, it, it's never ending. I, it, it's true that I need until 2 o'clock, but I'm not going to take until 2 o'clock. Well, Pete, Peter, come, now here comes Peter. Here comes Peter. He agrees with, with King David. And he says, affliction leads us not to live for ourselves, but for the will of God. 1 Peter 4.2. There is, there is synchronization here. So, this cannot be an obstacle to our spiritual growth. Pain can be an instrument of us getting good character. God-given character. We know that in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, we find that his strength shines brightest through human weakness. As um, we find that this is just a, a, a paraphrase. This, this is in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. It is like, and I tried to explain this to, uh, to, to Zach when we were praying at home. It's like, you know, we had the, the numbers of the TV box. It has, you know, it, had, it has numbers. And I put the light on for him. I said, can you see the lights? He said, well, barely. I said, okay, I switched off the lights and the, 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 the numbers, they, they came out. That's what that scripture means, I said, Zach. That when we submit, that when we release, we put down our will at God's feet and let his will in our lives, there, God's power can be seen more and more. Less of me and more of you. That's how God's power can be seen in us. So let me just go a couple of pages down to my conclusion. Uh, I always try to write a bit more, but, well, I never succeed in using all the scriptures, but, well, ev anyway. But I will be sharing these scriptures because Abigail, um, she suggested this morning that I, I post the scriptures that I formed this sermon from. And, yes, I will be happy to do that in English and Maltese um, later on on our page. So these are the processes that that is affliction and, and, and trials and persecution and, you know, hard living. God uses, to f f you know, he uses these to finish the work that he began in us. This is our sanctification part, you know, our transformation part. And transformation, as I said before, needs, you know, it's a bit painful. That's the truth. I mean, Jesus never said that it would be a bed of roses. So, let us not be afraid of affliction. And I am going to, s to quote Romans 12, which says, Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. You see, this is now evidently that this is part of our Christian walk. Scripture tells us in James chapter 1, and I am, I am quoting verse 4 and 12, let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Verse 12, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, listen to it coming, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. That's why it is worthwhile, brethren. So I hope that quoting another part of this chapter, where Paul brings out his heart and shows how much he loves the church. I hope that we can even use these same words that Paul used for our church in our prayers, 
for each other, in how we explain who we are. And this is what Paul said, and I hope that we use these same words for our church. So we have been greatly encouraged in your midst of our troubles and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, because you have remained strong in your faith. It gives us new life to know that you are standing firm in the Lord. Paul is saying here, it gives me life to know that you are committed, that you are surviving persecution, that you are fixing your eyes on Jesus, and nothing can move you from upon the rock that we just sang today. How we, we thank God for you. Because of you, we have great joy as we enter God's presence. Isn't this marvelous, brethren? I can imagine what Paul felt when he wrote this about his Thessalonian church. And I am sure that I am confident that we will hear these words, these same words from each other here in this church because our commitment is not just, I mean, firstly, it is serving God, but our commitment God uses even for us to build each other. So when we are committed to Christ, we are building each other up. And that is what Paul was saying in these last words I wrote to you. I thank God for this word. I thank God for his plan for us. And I pray. Father God, thank you for giving us yet another portion of your word, which can give us a deeper meaning of your plan the plan that you have for our lives, the purpose that you created us for. I thank you, Father, because the moment we trust you and we believe that you will deliver us from all afflictions, we rest assured that we are in, the, in, the, in safe hands and in the best plan, in the best way of our life. Thank you, Father, for, for protecting us. Thank you, Father, for leading us into a church. Thank you, Father, for you have written us in the palm of your hands. Thank you, Lord God, and I ask you to give us the grace that we will remain in our faith for the glory of your name. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.